Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and today we're gonna talk about servos, and more specifically, a little bit how to control those servos a little bit better. The other day I was doing a workshop, and a question came up in the workshop on uh, exactly the finer points of how the servos were controlled and how to fine tune that. So we're going to try and do my best to kind of explain a little bit about servos, how they're controlled, and how that understanding can help you in making a functioning robot that works a little better like we expect it to. So we need to start with the fact that there's two different types of servos that we have that are generally used in our Tetrix Robotics Prime system, and then also just in general in robotics. There's basically a standard servo, just like this one, and this is in a Prime mount. And you can see that I have a range of motion um, that is about 180 degrees. I'm gonna show, point that toward the camera so you can see that. About 180 degrees, and that's the range of motion. And then we have a, what we call a continuous rotation servo that actually will continue to spin all the way around 360 degrees and keep going. And it, this is what we standard uh, use as a drive motor. So two different types of servos. Now, both servos are controlled by what we call PWM. And PWM simply stands for pulse width modulation. And believe me, you don't have to understand all the details of it. For us, we can think of that simply as a value. And that value that we put in for the pulse width modulation, changing, modulating the width of that pulse, is what tells a servo either to go to a specific position in the instance of a standard servo, like this one, where I have a range of motion, or in the instance of this continuous rotation servo, it tells you direction and speed. So again, think of that as a value. And that value usually has a range. And depending on the software application that you use, that value range can change. So it's kind of hard to talk specifics about that. But think of it, I'll, I'll just say 0 to 180 as a sample range. For a standard servo, when we initialize the servo, it tries to go to a mid position. So if you think of that range from zero to 180, it tries to go to 90, okay? And that's the middle position. Zero being all the way over on this side, 180 all the way on that side. Now for a continuous rotation servo, it's a little bit different. You still have the same range, the value range, zero and 180, but that middle point, that 90, instead of, because we're going again, direction and speed, 90 becomes the point where it stops. So when I initialize a continuous rotation servo, and I tell it to go to 90, that's a dead stop. 180 would make it go full speed in one direction. Zero would make it go full speed in the opposite direction. So again, we're talking about the same range in commands, but a different effect on the servo. And it's important to understand that because when I initialize a servo, if it be a standard servo, and I go to mid position, that arm might go there. And that's a starting point for us. But if I'm talking about a mobile robot with a continuous rotation servo, and I tell it to go to the midpoint 90, we want the robot to be stopped as a starting position. We don't want it to move. Now, again, why this is different is because each individual servo comes from the factory with just a little bit different midpoint because of the variances in the manufacturing process. There's a, there's a basic resolution that, or, or general range, depending on the, the quality of the manufacturing that you, they try and stay in, but there's gonna be a little bit of variance. So, for instance, on, um, this particular mobile application, again, if I think of zero to 180 and 90 being my stop point, because of the variation in servos, 90 for this one might actually cause it to move just a little bit. So I have to be able to know what's going on and be able to find that middle or neutral position to make sure that, well, number one, when I initialize a servo, it actually doesn't move. 
So this is where, if you hear uh, someone describe setting a neutral position or initializing a servo to a neutral position, that's what it's talking about. The other way that this becomes important is if I want my robot to drive straight and there is a little bit of variance from side to side because of the servos being just slightly different, I might have to adjust my values so that when I give full speed from one side, I get the same effect and my robot drives straight. I might not be able to give both sides the same command in order to get my robot to actually behave the way I expect it to behave. So this is where the more you understand about how the servos are reacting and what's causing them to react that way, the better you're gonna be able to create a robot that, that performs the way you expect it to perform and performs well. So that's why understanding how these servos react becomes important for you as a robot builder and actually getting the most out of your equipment and the most out of your robot builds. So that's what we want to talk about a little bit. If you have more questions or you need a little bit better understanding of that, please don't be afraid to do a little research on your own on the internet and, think of, and look up things like PWM, pulse width modulation, and how that interacts with servo controls, both continuous rotation servos and standard servos. So I hope that was helpful information. Again, we want you to come back and see us, have fun building those robots, and enjoy.